If you have your Bibles tonight, please, I hope you do, I hope you have a Bible there, and I'd like you to open it up uh, and turn to the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 30, Proverbs chapter 30. We're going to look at two uh, main passages, and, um, and then uh, we're going to get into the message tonight. I'd like to speak to you on this theme, preparing for a rainy day, preparing for a rainy day. In, in Proverbs chapter 30, verse number 25, Proverbs 30, verse number 25, the Bible says, The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. Heavenly Father, thank you that we have the Bible tonight, and I pray that your Holy Spirit would illuminate the Scriptures. I pray that is listening tonight that is not saved, I pray that you would draw them to yourself, that they would then humble themselves and receive the gospel tonight as, for themselves and be saved. And Father, I just pray that someone would get saved tonight is our prayer. And then Lord, that we as your children that are listening tonight as a part of this live stream service, that uh, your word and the Holy Spirit would challenge us about this theme of preparation. In Jesus' name, amen. Proverbs chapter 6, if you'll turn over there as well. Proverbs chapter 6, you turn over just a few chapters to another familiar passage, also referring to that little creature called the ant. And I'm not talking about your relative. It's not that your ant is not a little creature, okay? So uh, Proverbs chapter number 6, verse number 6, the Bible says, Go to the ant, thou sluggard, Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. Notice, if you will, from these uh, passages of Scripture, there is a common theme. Not only is there a common creature, that would be the ant, but there is a common theme. And the common theme is preparation. We learn from these verses that it is wise to prepare. We also learn from these verses that preparation is very important. Now, I, I thought about this preparing for a rainy day because here, here in Vancouver, we definitely know a little bit about preparing for a rainy day. Now, we had a rainy day today. Part of it was raining here in Vancouver. Um, depending on where you're watching from. Maybe you, did, you haven't had rain for a while. We actually haven't had much rain for the last several weeks. And uh, so today was, was something new for us. Not really. We know all about rain. But uh, again, new for the last couple of weeks, which has been a huge blessing. Now, I remember, I, I can remember many times listening uh, on the radio or maybe even on the television and the weather person, the weather man, the weather lady, I guess you have to say that maybe anyway, the weather individual encouraging people that the next day they need to prepare for rain. What, they may have not said it like that. They said maybe uh, pre we're preparing uh, or, or get ready because it's going to be raining tomorrow. So what would you want to do? If, if you knew it was going to be raining, 100% chance, like we have so many times here, in the wintertime, 100% chance of rain, no doubt about it. You're going to prepare. You're going to get a jacket. You're going to get an umbrella. You might even get a hat. You're going to make preparation. That's exactly what they're saying. You know, rain is coming. Hey, hello, rain is coming. Prepare for a rainy day. Now, I know a little bit about preparation, and I'm sure you know a little bit about preparation as well. Um, possibly, uh, even today or even right now, even in the current time which we're living, we have to prepare for a meeting, possibly, at work. Um, there is, uh, how about this one, ladies? And maybe even there's some gentlemen that like to do this. There is meal preparation, right? Meal preparation. And uh, then uh, uh, Sunday school teachers, and maybe you're still teaching Sunday school, maybe you're not right now. Uh, but Sunday school teachers, you've got to prepare. You've got to prepare. You've got to study the lesson. You've got to uh, read the scripture, study the, study the verses, put it all together, get it ready. Uh, obviously, uh, pastors, we've got to study. We've got to prepare. Uh, maybe you're taking online exams now. Everybody's doing school online. Everybody's now a homeschooler all of a sudden. Amen? And all you homeschoolers out there, shout it out right now. Amen. Anyway, 
we prepare, hopefully, hopefully we prepare for uh, an exam for university or for uh, school. We make preparation. So to say that we don't understand preparation, I think, would be incorrect. We do. Uh, lately, this hasn't been happening. Well, I guess it has been. We just don't see it. But professional athletes, they prepare all the time, all the time. Olympic athletes preparing all the time and getting ready, getting ready for that one event, getting ready for that one game, uh, getting ready for the World Series, getting ready for uh, the Stanley Cup playoffs or whatever. Uh, preparation, preparation, preparation. We understand what the word is. We understand what it means. Now, these verses of Scripture um, tell us tonight, and maybe you've read them before, but they're a great reminder that even the ant prepares. Now, maybe you haven't seen too many ants yet this season. Maybe you have. I mean, they're not... Okay, I'm talking about the little household ants right now. Now, I know around the world there's some bigger ants, but I'm talking about the little household ants you know, stay away from the fire ants and all that kind of stuff and some of those really big old monster ants around the world. I'm, I'm not referring to those. We live in Canada. We don't have too many of those around here that I know of. I hope not. But it tells us that even this ant prepares. This ant prepares. So I, I wrote down three applications regarding preparation and regarding the little creature that God has emphasized in two different places that they are known for preparing for a rainy day. Number one, number one, preparation always, you, you can mark this down, preparation always happens in the past. Think about what we just said. Preparation always happens in the past. What do you mean by that? Okay, we may not see the benefit of preparation when we are preparing. It might seem like a waste of time if you were to get into your car and you were to, all of a sudden, the rain were to come down and you were to, uh, or, or, you, or you turn on the radio, excuse me, you were to turn on the car and the radio man, uh, weatherman on the radio were to say, later today it's going to be raining. It doesn't look like it right now. And who wants to go back in and get an umbrella or a coat or a hat I'm going to be late for that meeting that I prepared for, or I'm going to be late for that appointment, whatever it may be. No, preparation says, okay, I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take an extra whopping 60 seconds to 90 seconds. I'm going to go back in the house. I'm going to get the umbrella. I'm going to get the coat. I'm going to get the jacket, and I'm going to prepare for rain. See, preparation always happens in the past. It might seem like a waste of time to get all the facts together prior to the meeting. Instead, why don't I just go to the meeting? What's the important part? The important part is the meeting, right? Well, yes, it's important, but I submit to you that of, the, of, of as much importance as the meeting is, it's the preparation that's in the past for the meeting that will take place. It's going back in and taking the time to get the umbrella, the coat, and the hat so that when it does rain, you have something to protect you. You see, the preparation for the rain doesn't start when it starts raining. It's too late then. It's too late when you get in the meeting and the boss says, Ben, do you have the project? On, do you have that project for the certain, certain project? Do you have it ready? And I knew I needed to have it ready, and I don't have it ready. You know what? It's too late. See, preparation always happens in the past. It might seem like a waste of time to prepare uh, before the game. I can just go to the game. I can just, I, I, I know how to play basketball. I know how to play baseball. I know how to do whatever it is. I can just go. I know we use the word practice with that, but who needs practice? Practice is, it is no fun. But look, you don't hit the game-winning jumper in game six of the NBA Finals unless you've done some preparation. Preparation always happens in the past. Preparation is past tense. Now, it may not be in this grammatical. I'm just saying that in the sense of preparation is not something that when we head into uh, an event, if we haven't prepared, you know what? It's too late. Preparation always happens in the past. Most species of ants eat large amounts of food in autumn to put on fat. 
Think about it. This allows them to go without food through the winter. I always wondered why late August I saw big old chubby ants running around my house. Did you ever see some big old chubby ants? You kids that are watching out there tonight, listening to the live stream. This August, get ready, because according to this quote, we're going to be seeing some chubby ants running around our house. You know what? I've never seen a chubby ant that I know of, unless it was the queen or something, the queen ant or whatever. Uh, no, but that they're storing up. They're storing up. Why? Because in the winter time, it's, it's too late to prepare for, for the ant. And so you know what the ant does? Provides in the summertime. We just read that a few moments ago. Proverbs 30, verse 25. They prepare their meat in the summer. You know, you think about it. In the summertime, I think I'm going to say this later on. In the summertime, there's all kinds of food. Why, why, prepare, for, why prepare for the future when we can just eat in the summertime because there's so much food? I'm thinking like an ant right now. Oh, but by the way, sometimes I think an ant has a lot more wisdom than humans. How many of us are guilty how many of us are guilty of not preparing? The ant prepares, the ant prepares, and it happens in the past. The law of sowing and reaping is not only agricultural, it is also spiritual. Many of you know the verse in Galatians chapter 6, verse number 7, where the Bible says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also what? Reap. Now again, this is not... Uh, this is not uh, a, a, a news flash. This is not divine revelation that I had this afternoon here at the church office. That sowing precedes reaping. You don't reap and then sow. It doesn't work that way, does it? It's just like it's just like getting ready. You prepare for the office meeting. You prepare for uh, the sporting event. You prepare for the test. No, okay. You sow so that you can reap. You prepare so that you can reap. Uh, it, it, is, it is definitely clear in my mind, agriculturally, if you do not sow something in the ground, you are not going to reap something later on. It is impossible. Then why is it that we don't think about it spiritually? Why is it that we don't think about the fact that if we're not preparing for temptation, when temptation comes, we're in trouble? Why is it that we don't think about preparing for discouragement so that when discouragement comes, we're ready? Why is it that we don't prepare uh, for a disappointment so that when disappointment comes, we're ready? You see, the law of sowing and reaping is always... Hey, why is it that we don't prepare for hearing bad news? Not fake news. Bad news. Why is it that we don't prepare ahead of time so that when bad news comes, and I'm, I'm a glass half full kind of guy, okay, but everyone, everyone listening right now, you have heard news at some point in your life that you were not ready to hear, and maybe, maybe you prepared for it. I, I know I always haven't. I want to, and I want to be more diligent because the law of preparation is it always happens in the past. You can't get a phone call and get discouraged or get discouraging news and then all of a sudden, oh, oh i got to go prepare. Now, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for His mercy. Praise the Lord that we can go to the Scriptures, we can go to the Psalms, we can go to the Word of God, even if we haven't prepared and God will help us. But how much better would it be that we prepare for those things that are, we know could be coming? I prepare for a rainy day by grabbing a coat and an umbrella. I prepare for a rainy day by getting a hat. I prepare for a rainy day by wearing the proper shoes. I prepare for a rainy day uh, by taking the, uh, maybe a little bit warmer uh, clothing on. One way to prepare for temptation and one way to prepare for discouragement. One way to prepare for bad news. There's more than one. But just thinking about this, one way, as God laid it on my heart, is my connection to the local New Testament church that I'm a part of. That's how you prepare. Look, hey, five weeks now, no meeting together. Could we have ever prepared for this? Let's just be very honest. Uh, the first answer I want to say is no, because I never saw this coming. And so to say specifically that we could prepare for this type of thing uh, in, a, in a specific way, a, pa a pandemic, COVID-19 and all of that, not being able to meet publicly, it's unprecedented. 
So how could we prepare for something that's really, at least in my lifetime, never happened? And maybe there was some, the plagues and things of other, uh, of other centuries in the early 1900s that happened. And I know uh, there were the terrible things. So I'm not saying that we're having the terrible things. But I've never heard of anything quite like this. So how do you prepare for that? Well, you don't prepare specifically for that. But I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that God prepares us in the past for what is coming. And if we have the connection, here, listen now carefully, if we have a connection to the local New Testament church, we have something that the Bible calls the pillar. The pillar and the ground of the truth. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. The pillar and ground of the truth is the local Bible preaching New Testament church. Oh, I really truly believe tonight that one way to prepare for all of those things that I mentioned is to be a part of a church that preaches the Word of God. I'm, 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 I am, um, I'm submitting to us tonight that the church is an anchor. The church is a blessing. It's not perfect uh, because you're in it and I'm in it. But uh, with Jesus Christ leading it, uh, the church, is, it belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. The church is filled with encouragers. The church we call a family. The church should be a place where we find the love of God. The church is very needed. Amen to that. The church can be an ointment for someone who's got a great wound. The church is a place for us to come and rejoice. The church should help stabilize us. The church, we call it a team as well. It's very valuable. And when we go to the church, sometimes we get great warnings from the Word of God. I'm telling you tonight that as a born-again believer, someone that's been saved since he was nine years old, I have so much more to learn, but I have learned this. Preparation doesn't start the minute that I'm pushed into something that tries my faith. Preparation is always in the past. Don't think that when something comes on you immediately that you're going to be able to react and act properly if you didn't prepare. You sow, you reap. So if you sow no preparation, guess what? You reap no help. Or the help that you could have had. Again, thank God for His mercy that He, he bails us out. He's bailed me out many times. It's a way to prepare for a rainy day. Preparation always happens in the past. Don't forget that thought. Don't forget that. The ant prepared in the summer so that in the winter they would have food. When we think of the summer and the winter, the summer is the past, is it not? Yes, it is. Preparation always happens in the past. Number two, preparation is, and this is the emphasis, work. Uh-oh, I said it, work. Proverbs 30, verse 25 the ants are a people, notice this, not strong. Maybe you ought to circle those two words or underline them. Not strong. Now, they, are, they do have strength. But the Bible says they're not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. You know what I've noticed about ants? Okay, I've noticed this about ants. When they're crawling around on the sidewalk and I'm sitting there and I see one by me and I put my hand in front of the ant, you've done this, you put your hand in front of the ant and it just stops and doesn't go anywhere for a long time. It gives up. Oh, there's a giant structure in front of me, the ant thinks. So therefore, I must just sit here and wait for the giant structure to move or I will just have to wait here forever. Now, I don't know about you, but I've, the ants that I've done that to, they may have stopped for a moment, you know, because of the muscle-bound hand that got in their way. Just kidding. But I mean, imagine what a hand looks like to a little, little ant. It may, have, it may have stopped for an instant, but it didn't take long, and that ant was either going over my finger, around my hand, or back around. Here it is. Have, we ever, have you ever noticed that an ant will do everything possible to get to the place they are going? Now, I know that seems like a funny way of saying it, but you know what? I know you and I know me. We don't even do that sometimes in the Christian life. To do everything we possibly can to get to the place that we are going and I'm specifically referring to the place where the food source is located. Hey, if that ant's got a beeline uh, for, a, for some food in the summer at the park, I'm telling you that ant is going to make sure that that ant gets there. This quote, when they, an ant, are on the trail for food, they don't let any obstacle stand in their way. They don't stand there. Can you imagine this? And again, you've got to use your imagination tonight, okay? They don't stand there with their hands on their hips and look at each other in disbelief. 
They don't shrug their shoulders. Can you see an ant shrugging the shoulder? You have to look really fast if you're going to see an ant shrug its shoulder. And they don't shrug their shoulder and give up on their goal. They don't start to feel sorry for themselves and decide that success isn't for him. No. What does that ant do? Let me tell you what that ant does. That ant confronts the obstacle, either walks around it, as I said a moment ago, over it or through it or under it until they achieve their desired income. Why? Because the ant understands that preparation isn't easy. Preparation is work. It takes work to get that food in the summertime when it's hot, but they're getting it and preparing it. The ant is working in the now, but they are preparing for the future. You know what? When you're sitting down reading your Bible every morning, everything in your life might be going just fine. Okay? You know what you're doing? You're, you, you are studying and reading the Word of God in the now, but you're preparing for the future. When you're committing verses of Scripture to memory now, in the present, about the joy of the Lord is your strength, about the fact that Jesus, the Bible says in Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. When you're learning verses in the Bible that talk about the Lord is my shield and my rock, He's my high tower, He's lifted me up out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock. Um, other verses of Scripture, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I'm saying, when you're memorizing Scripture in the now, there may be a time when you're memorizing it and nothing is going wrong. There isn't any bad news in your life. But what you are doing is you are preparing now for when the bad news comes. And so you've prepared in the past and you've worked in the past. Preparation is always past tense. Preparation is always work. And you've put in the time, you've put in the time in the Word of God so that when the difficulties come, the principles of the Word of God are right there. Now, let's just be honest though. Even in the most traumatic times of our life, your life and mine, it doesn't matter sometimes how many verses of Scripture that we have memorized. It takes, it, we get stung. Have you ever been stung by, uh, by a, a tragedy or emotion? I'm not talking about a bee or an ant. I'm talking about an emotional sting or, a, or a, just like, okay, you get hit in the stomach by a, by a big soccer ball. What does it do? Oh, takes the wind out of you. You can't breathe. Oh, I'm going to die. No, you just got just to gotta calm down. Look, I know, I know several people that in the last six months have had the wind knocked out of them something fierce. But I, for the most part, those people that I'm thinking of right now, and I love them dearly, those people that I'm thinking of right now, as far as I know, they prepared. They prepared when everything was going just fine. Little did they know what was coming. They prepared by reading their Bible every day. They prepared by being involved in the local church. They prepared by studying. They prepared by memorizing Scripture so that when the wind knocked out of them and the rain poured on them, they had an umbrella, the Word of God. They had a hat, the promises. They had a coat, the arms of God. Oh, my friend, preparation is work. It doesn't look like it's any, of any value sometimes. Oh, I, gotta, I get up and I do this again and again and again and again. You know what you're doing? You are preparing. I am preparing. Not only for myself, but for someone else possibly as well. I think about someone who prepares a meal. Oh my. Preparing a meal is very time consuming. I mean, you think about it, getting the ingredients together. Uh, right now, it's even more time consuming if you have to go to the store. When you go to the store to get those items, hello, it's time consuming. Let's think about it. We pick out the menu for the week or we plan the meals for the month or however you do it and you pick out the ingredients that are needed and you go to the store and you buy all the ingredients. That's not the end of the preparation. That's just the beginning. It takes work. And then it comes time to prepare the meal for Thursday night and you've got the ingredients and you've got to get this out and start thawing it and you've got to uh, put this together and that together and much time goes into it and, and, and it's special and it's, it's for the family and there's not, I'm telling you, uh, preparing for a meal is time consuming. Preparing for a meal is work. And we all miss our restaurants right now, right? No. 
I love having home cooked meals. But I know when my when as my wife makes meals for us, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. And in many times, if we're not careful, this is not the message, but someone puts in a lot of time and we just throw it all down the throw it all down the pipe and it's gone and wow, that was so good. And we don't even think about how much time it took. It took a lot of preparation, takes work. Preparing for a test, it takes work. Oh, I remember making flashcards when I was in high school and in college and have the question on one side and the answer on the other. And I had, a, I had stacks of those for all my subjects uh, that I liked. Uh, I had stacks of those for most subjects. I wish I would have had it for all of them. A few of them showed that I didn't make the note cards that I should have. If I would have only worked better, if I would have only prepared, I would have had maybe better uh, letters on my grade card than I had. <laughs> but uh, it takes work, time, effort. Preparation takes work. Preparation for even something as insignificant as a sporting event. I'm a sports nut, but and it's, you know, in a sense it's insignificant, but I believe part of sports is very good character builder. But preparing for a sporting event takes time. It takes work. How about the work that Jesus Christ did for you and for me? The work on the cross. Christ's preparation made it possible for sinners to be forgiven. See, Christ prepared the plan of redemption, by, uh, fulfilled the plan of redemption by dying on the cross. Without the death on the cross, we have no way of being saved. Oh, my friend, tonight... We can be saved. We can be born again of the Spirit of God because of the preparation that was made possible by the Lord Jesus Christ. He died, was buried, and rose again. And tonight, if you're listening and you're not saved, you cannot prepare to be saved. The preparations for your salvation have already been made. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus Christ said when His last breathing breaths, uh, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost to tell us die. It is finished. The preparation for you and I to go to heaven has already been made. It took work. It took his death. His shed blood. Preparation is work. Jesus' preparation made it possible as well for us to have church. He died for the church. See, Jesus prepared so we could have church tonight. Number one, what did we say? Preparation always happens where? In the past. Number two, we said preparation is work. Okay, number three. Go with me to Psalm 128. Psalm 128. Psalm 128. Then we're going to come back to Proverbs. Psalm 128, verse number two. Number three. You're turning to Psalm 128, and you're, you're writing and turning at the same time. I know you're multitaskers out there in, in the radio land, okay, internet land. Number three, preparation provides. Now, I don't know what it provides because it's, it just, it provides. If the blank is whatever you're working toward, it'll provide it. Preparation provides. Look at Psalm 128, verse 2. The Bible says, For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. For thou shalt eat the preparation, the labor, the work of thine hands. Sowing, reaping. Proverbs 14 and verse 23, the Bible says, In all labor there is profit. In all labor there is profit. There is profit. Go back with me to our text, Psalm chapter 30, or excuse me, Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30. Preparation provides. Proverbs 30, verse 25. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. I've alluded to this a little bit already tonight, but preparation provides, number one, peace during a storm. Peace during a storm. It is almost impossible to have the peace of God in the storm without some sort of preparation. I mean, think about so many of these hymns that are in our hymn book. Many of them were written in a stormy time in someone's life. Why? Because they had prepared. They had had a, they had a walk with God. Oh, if you're neglecting your Bible reading, please repent of that. Get right with God tonight and get into the Word of God. Start preparing. 
for a rainy day. And that's not a negative way of thinking about it. I'd rather be prepared for a rainy day than get caught out in a rainstorm. Well, I'll tell you what, you get caught in a rainstorm, a lot of things can happen to you besides getting wet. You can get very sick. Uh, you can get pneumonia. You can get ill and so forth and so on. You can be in the hospital. You can. There's so many things that can happen. Oh, how about it? When we get caught in a storm of life, if we haven't prepared, a lot more than just that storm of life can happen to us. See, preparation provides peace during a storm. Number two, preparation provides comfort during a time of loss. During a time of loss. Family members in recent days, maybe yours, mine, I know for sure, have lost family members within the last six months. We weren't prepared really for that in, some, in one case in particular. You probably weren't prepared for that either. Oh, we were prepared in the sense that we know God is good. You know, and again, that's what I'm saying tonight. Look, we prepare when everybody's healthy because we don't think anybody's going to die when they're 45 years old, 44 years old. But it happens. So what do we do? We prepare. Why? We prepare because we know that preparation is going to provide comfort. We're going to know where to go in the Bible and tell somebody how to be comforted. Why? Because we prepared in the past and we put in the work. Preparation provides a way of escape when temptation comes. Well, I tell you what, we need to be on guard right now. All the time, but we need to be on guard right now. Many of us, our whole schedule of life has been completely turned upside down. And we are, we are, we are creatures of habit. And that can be a good thing, actually. Schedule is a good thing, you know, as long as our schedule revolves around the Word of God. But when we get out of our schedule, when we get out of our, even our spiritual routine, you know, it's a very dangerous time. Preparation provides a way of escape when temptation comes. We need to be built, we need to get some building blocks and we need to prepare. We need to prepare a wall. We need to prepare a wall because the devil's coming. The fiery darts are coming. We need to build that wall up. We need to strengthen that wall. We need to make it two bricks thick. We need to strengthen that because the devil's coming. Preparation provides a way of escape when temptation comes. Preparation provides food during the harvest. Food during the harvest. Preparation provides a home in heaven. Are you ready to die tonight? Pastor Turner, what are you talking about? Well, in, in recent days, a lot of people have died, and I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to be unkind at all, but I, I wonder how many, of the people, how many people that have died of this, of this very terrible um, COVID-19, I wonder how many of them were prepared for death. Look, when they took their last breath, it was too late to prepare. That's why we are, right now, we are raising our voice, not yelling, but raising our voice with, with, with the voice of God, and we are saying, it is time to prepare for eternal eternity. It is not time to wait. If you are not prepared for eternity, preparation prepares you for eternity. The way we prepare for eternity is we look to the Lamb of God. For He alone is able to save you. Look to the Lamb of God. We prepare for eternity by looking at the nail-scarred hands of the Lord Jesus Christ, the sword-pierced uh, sword side of the Lord Jesus Christ. We prepare by turning our life over to the Lord Jesus Christ and, and, re and, and repenting and saying, I am not worthy. I am, it is not my way. It is not man's way. But it is your way, Lord Jesus Christ, of getting to heaven and believing God's way and accepting God's way and receiving Him. Look, only those who prepare will be in heaven. You're not going to get to heaven by accident. Oh, I didn't know I was going to be here. No. You prepare for that by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. Our text verse one more time. Proverbs 30, 25. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. Preparation is always past tense. Are you preparing right now in the present so that someday in the future, stay with me, someday in the future, you can remember the past that you prepared? I sure am glad I was reading my Bible. I sure am glad that I listened to the preacher. I sure am glad I listened to that counsel. Biblical counsel. Not, not manly counsel. Biblical counsel. I'm sure I'm glad I didn't make that choice. Why? why? Why were you able to say that? Because you prepared in the past. Preparation is work. 
You don't wake up and go out and do a half an hour of work in the garden and the garden's ready and then you come out in late August, September and boom, there it is. It doesn't work that way. You've got to put in hour upon hour upon hour upon hour of hard work. And then when you're sitting down at the kitchen table in the fall, I just lick my lips because I remember the corn. I always talk about this. You get that ear of sweet corn out of the garden and you put hot butter over top of it. Oh, my goodness. You know what? I don't, I don't think about the hard work when I'm sitting at the table eating the fresh vegetables that came out of the garden that we worked in. I don't remember that. Why? Because we prepared in the, we prepared in the, uh, in, in the past and we got a harvest. Preparation takes hard work. Oh, but, but, number three, preparation. What are you going to choose to do? Hey, this is not just for adults, by the way. By the way, the younger you are, the better it is for you to hear this now. You're 17 years old. It's good you're hearing this. Let me encourage you. Start preparing if you haven't. Start right now. If you're 12 years old, start preparing. Hey, start preparing for your future mate. Yes. Yeah. You should be preparing right now for your future mate. You should be praying, God, please bring the right person into my life to marry when it's time for me to get married, if, you, if, you ha if your will is that I get married. You start preparing now. You start preparing. You start praying now for the right mate. Come on now. Parents, I want you to back me up on this. This is, this is the truth. You prepare. You pray now. Parents, you should be praying that as well. We prayed that. We prayed that very early on for our kids, very early on. And we're not the best parents, and I'm telling you that for sure. But I'm telling you, prepare now. You don't all of a sudden get into a situation which you didn't prepare for and expect to just have all the answers. It doesn't work that way. Prepare. Preparation is in the past. Preparation is work. Oh, but I'll tell you, preparation provides. It provides everything 